Hi guys, so um, you know, I've made a few videos now about Painter and Photoshop and the differences and, and, and yada yada yada, but I want to kind of get down to the, the key differences that really separate them as software, you know, and separate what we can use them for. Um, I apologize, I didn't capture the, the start of this process. Um, I started this painting, I think last night, and I had to go to the Deontay Wilder versus um, Tyson Fury kind of fight. Me and some friends was watching it in the city centre. Um, so I kind of didn't really finish it or anything or, you know, go that far with it. This is kind of the start of the process. Uh, this year, I kind of want to make more finalised pieces, less speed paintings. So I'm going to kind of try and render this thing out. But I wanted to go over, like, you know, tools you can use in painter that have texture because i've i've talked a lot about it blending i haven't really talked about texture brushes now in painter texture works a little bit differently to how it works in photoshop and it's strange because um your texture is often defined by one selection um but then also with painter you can kind of bring in a texture and then you can still blend the paint like kind of like so which is strange right it's quite interesting and it creates an interesting effect a lot of the time um, and usually blend the paint through kind of lightly pressing down and doing movements it's very very intuitive it's almost natural how it works um, you know it's similar to how Photoshop paints with texture um, but not exactly the same different brushes apply texture differently um, But usually it's this thing called your papers palette. So I'm going to bring up the papers palette right now Go into window right here Paper panels and just whip out papers and paper libraries, right? And here it is it's appeared behind so what papers is is the texture you know, it's my texture that I'm selecting and Rename paper, da, 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 make paper. I think if I make this paper, I think this stays default. Nope, this is a completely different paper. This is me making a brand new paper. I was just kind of getting myself back used to how painter works. Quite interesting. You can make your own kind of papers from a, a, a basic default. But, excuse my phone. I'm going to put that on silent. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so what happens is that this paper texture is the texture of all of my texture brushes you know which is you know quite strange but at the same time um it kind of it changes throughout the different brushes each brush doesn't interpret the texture exactly the same way each brush has its own grain um amount you know, so how much green you put in the brush versus how much paint you put in the brush. Like this brush can't get 100% to opacity. It still has these little grainy pieces in it, which a lot of Photoshop brushes also have, but it'll always have those in it because um, that's what the grain is set to. You know, it's mostly green. But you can use these brushes a variety of different ways as i've already explained and because it is its own brush engine that isn't you know the same as photoshop you can get so much from it in its own way and then in conjunction with different brushes you know you can use it to take yourself to different places and but sometimes i find myself getting carried away look at that that's a cool shape too bad I'm not going to keep it. Cool shape though. I kind of want to keep it now, but I'm not going to keep it. So, um, but I just wanted to go over the way I could utilize texture to kind of help my initial image. You know, um, I wanted to go over like how you would use these kinds of brushes if you were creating concept art or doing character design, um, things that I primarily do you know and even obviously things like environments it's a no-brainer you can use the same techniques um 
but kind of similar to Photoshop. It's just um, everything you do in Painter has this organic feel to it because it's designed to be a tool that is similar to traditional painting, but having all the tools under one kind of umbrella, you know. So you can go in and add heaps of depth in a, a very small kind of time frame. Now, um, it's important to note that at any time you can change this paper to any of these. And they all have they all have different values. They all have different ways of being utilized. They all look so that's a that's a very much kind of dotty paper. But you can go in here and alter the um, state of how the paper works. But this is very much like if you wanted a very gruff texture, like slight a slight texture look. You go in and you'd add this. You know this isn't for painting. Like, cause it's got so much white in the image. You see, this will come through like like a dream. Look, half tone. If you want to make some manga or something, here it is. Straight half tone. That works well. Um, got this thing it's in between. The ones that are closer to white are very much in between. The ones that are kind of like a little darker kind of work as you know as they were working. Now, as I said. Um, Different brushes interpret the paper texture differently. Like this is um, the oil pastel. Now the oil pastel in painter works a lot more like a paintbrush. Like it works a lot more like gouache or something than it than it does like um, than the chalks I would just use and do. Right? Look at that. You get this really nice brush stroke, but it also blends. Right? So. When switching to a different paper, same again. We, st we get the same effect. We get some of the paper texture mixed with the blending effect. I haven't, I haven't actually done this before, so I'm kind of having fun. I remember using this texture back in the day. Wow, I haven't used this texture for a while. This is kind of like, there's a lot of Photoshop textures like this one. Cool, all right, so maybe what I'm thinking then is, cause I, I kind of, I've done so many strokes that erasing it's gonna be an issue. What I'm thinking is maybe I'll start a new painting and just use kind of like different paper textures and stuff to get me through the image. Because I kind of wanted to save this image and, and, and do stuff with it later. So uh, that might be the play. I'm gonna put an arrow, so I wanna... That's a note to myself. I gotta raise this guy up, so I want his feet to be in the image. Um, Let's make a new image. Uh, I have a, a format made called Daily Sketch, which is always um, a similar size, kind of perfect Instagram size, by the way. So, if anyone wants to screenshot and steal my dimensions, that this this is the perfect size for an Instagram Im image. I don't know the technical format, the kind of like what it'd be called, like would it be called like I don't know four by three or something. I don't know, but someone explained it to me the other day or not someone I was watching a YouTube video and it was being explained what ratio it is the other day so so what I'm doing now I'm just building up um, something from shapes make some shapes and I, th as far as I'm concerned this shape here is the def is definitely the head the head's gonna be this kind of this this kind of a crazy kind of diamondy shape, um, just because it's already hit me. I'm seeing contours within the form. I'm saying, okay, that's that's the direction I'm going in. That's where I'm going. Um, I 
So I've always had this thing where I like to create like faceless warriors. Kind of like, you know, like Warframe and stuff. Really cool kind of like these semi-faceless characters. They just kind of have these masks on and... Hmm. All right, so let's change our paper texture because why not? We've gone back to the bloody default one anyway, so let's try this one out. Well, this one's cool. I used to have this tool. Well, not used to this. It's still in Painter, but haven't loaded any shapes in for it i used to have i used to use this tool called the um pastel chalk and i used to use it all the time um i have an old hard drive on an old on an old macbook that has all of my painter stuff on it and i'm gonna i'm just gonna we transfer it to myself and just use it in the new version of painter because i've got all these tools and stuff that i need to bust out man like all these kind of workspaces and all these kind of things that I'd love to utilize in, in um, this version of Painter. But I've been so happy just utilizing the basic tools that I haven't even pursued that. Like, it's interesting how much, um, how much texture can add you know because a lot of the stuff we perceive is texture like a lot of the i've really noticed like you know with the speed painting trend everyone the more texture you can kind of get into an image that describes things helps so much more than just like how much you think you can render something in a short space of time you know a lot of the time rendering doesn't matter as long as you have key forms down you know, it's the texture and the lighting that really makes the thing what it, you know, read like what it's supposed to be or what the idea of it's supposed to be is. All right, let's try another paper texture. Um, by the way, you can alter the size of these textures. I'm just choosing to not alter the size of them because it will alter the initial size of the one I always use and I don't really want it to be altered. But in fact, for the sake of this video, I'm going to take a screenshot of the dimensions so I can just at the end of this process I can just go back so I am going to alter some sizes and stuff and see what I can get paper scale paper contrast so this is you bump the contrast up and you can make it more um, more or less powerful potent you know and then you can scale it up so I can get bigger or smaller um, circles or whatever and you got the brightness so there's a lot of things that go into this whole process like that you can alter and really you can really f you know change how the paper works for you you know look at that look at that difference look at the difference in this stroke from these strokes you know i can go to hit this level where i'm just basically doing lighting now you know i'm adding grain to to a shape you know anyway what I should have done when I started doing this painting was uh, use the lasso tool, but I'm gonna kind of be more serious now. I'm gonna kind of establish some forms and stuff. So I'm thinking maybe big arms, maybe this is a, a, a circular object here, maybe you know, establish some shapes, kind of get into what this is. As I said, it's some armored, some ambiguously armored character with an interesting helmet design on top. Um, I've realized that like sometimes I just go quiet but it's like when I'm in my own head getting into this because I love art um, 
I, a lot of the time I've, I've struggled classifying what I do as art because I've always in my head to me it's concept art or it's character design and they're more like design um, to me right but at the same time the way in which you know using something like painter it's a very artistic process using Photoshop it can be an artistic process but a lot of the time it's a technical process it's more like being a designer sometimes you know and then sometimes it's not sometimes it's it's more like being an artist but um, you know with Photoshop you work in it for so many years you have all your your tools set it's like being a designer you know exactly what you're gonna do you know what brushes you're gonna use I've just come in here and I'm just discovering new paper textures and I'm gonna screenshot because <laughs> I like this I like this paper texture But this isn't something I do often. I knew exact. I knew about this because, as a kid, I watched a lot of. Um, there's this guy called Android Jones, and he made a massive black um, pay painter tutorial, and it was amazing. This company called Massive Black. I think they still exist. They um, still create concept art and stuff. They're still a, a company in the industry. Um, but they uh, they were a group of concept artists and artists that were just. Um, incredible and they had a website called conceptart.org and it was a big thing and you know in the earlier 2000s you know before ArtStation and and before CG Hub and all that you know it was conceptart.org where a lot of people kind of got their start and Android Jones was one of the big kind of like founders of that and his his style kind of his artistic style evolved beyond concept art he started being um more of a, a, a complete and utter fine artist that used the digital medium and, you know, um, promotes the digital medium as a, you know, legitimate art medium. And he kind of frowns upon the idea that digital, I mean, digital art isn't art because a lot of people don't see digital art as art. You know, it's not wide, it's not widely accepted as, you know, art like traditional art is. And he says, traditional art is romanticized and I, I, I agree with him um, but I understand because you know something that's been around for you know digital art has been around for less than 50 years you know in general and traditional art has been around for probably a hundred thousand years plus you know humans have been painting on caves and cave walls and all these things it's not something we can just bypass as a as a as a a world so easily but it'll be the snap of a fingers when digital art is finally the the kind of like main form of art in the world because now i'm seeing so much ipad pro so much ipad people just whipping out their apple pencils you know i think it was a great idea when apple said the apple pencil can be utilized on more than just the ipad pro because the ipad pro was out of a lot of people's price range you know so if you can just get an ipad mini or an ipad and use the apple pencil and draw on procreate or whatever tool you want to draw on um i say procreate because it's my go-to even though i've had a lot of issues with it it's a good tool you know i think with procreate and this is me rambling, but I think with Procreate, the key thing is this. I'm going to change paper texture now because I've been in this one for ages, but I love this one. This one's really good. Um, for me, the key thing with Procreate is this, right? Um, it's, it's a tool that requires you to have a streamlined process. And if you don't have a streamlined process... Um, you know, if you don't have a streamlined process, it's gonna be more difficult for you to get through a painting, you know, properly. Because it doesn't have all of the accessibility of all the other tools like Photoshop. You know, there's certain you can't you can't have your fingers on alt on the keyboard. You don't have that level of speed to kind of select colours and stuff. The brushes aren't always the same. They do, they do, they do a good job, but it's not the same engine you're used to. If you're a Photoshop user, there's a few things that you know overall make you kind of realize that 
you can't use this tool exactly the same way as you could use shop but there's advantages to the tool you know its brush engine is unique it's not the same which means that it has its own um energy to bring i like procreate's round brush i think it works more fluidly than photoshop's round brush i think procreate's brushes work quite fluidly to be honest with you um you know i do think they, they're quite fluid they're just you know it just takes some getting used to if you're a photoshop user um you know it's like using photoshop tools but they work differently and feel differently and that is a strange experience um and it was a strange experience for me at, at first but as time's gone on i more and more enjoy the process you know and honestly i more and more enjoy using like the round brush in procreate just because as i said it's it, it's it's more fluid it does its own thing you know trying to define that kind of like triangular shape but yeah i'm enjoying this so the tool i'm primarily using you can see it but it's called the oil pastel right um this is kind of like the main tool i use to kind of use texture and paint on um just because it just feels it just has this really good feeling to it it just and paint, paint is also this is interesting about paint it's always had its um its own brush calibration setting which is i always found to be interesting before procreate before any of these softwares paint had um brush calibration so you could or pen calibration so you can pal calibrate how your pen feels in the software um and I, I, that was i just always thought that was that was an innovation you know But I've been, you know, I've been singing painters' praises from the heavens forever. I mean, my my channel is not very big, but my highest viewed video is, you know, it's about how um, how painter kind of differs from Photoshop, and you know why I'm, you know, I, I like the software so much because there was a time when I really was going to switch over, but. I think I had a technical issue and I couldn't get painter on my um the machine that I had at the time and that was what it was. I, I got a MacBook Pro and my MacBook Pro had something something wrong with the graphics card or something like that. So it would run Photoshop um but it wouldn't run Painter. So I just kind of like for a few years stopped using Painter. And I had an I had an old white MacBook that had Painter on, but that the, the MacBook was dying on me. I didn't want to replace its battery, so I just stopped using it. So it was a strange one. All right, so <clears throat> let me have a look at a different texture. So what, I'm re what I reckon is I'm going to make a new layer here, make it a gel layer. So there's two ways you can add background colors in paint or you can use a gel layer, which might just multiply stuff, which is annoying. Or you can use the, the, the um, darkened setting. So if you grab something like, you know, let's say this color. And I go in with darken, it won't affect things darker than it. 
so I can kind of go in and make some background artifacts and it won't affect other things in front of it even though it's a layer on top which is always good and go in and throw in some just mock shapes for buildings you know some couple lines here and there just kind of trying to define something There we go, we've got these we've got these shapes. Now, I'm not trying to make anything perfect by the way, I'm just trying to give some background to this piece. Cause um it's a situation where I've I was I thought when I when I started doing this image I really thought I was going in one direction and maybe that'll be the next video the direction I thought I was going in because I have an idea even when I do it like a, something like this it's just like a quick thing I have an idea of what type of image I want to make because that in my head that's how I work I work on images I want to make um, and when I woke up today I wanted to make like a like a character design kind of image. I'm gonna drop those layers, so now this is all one layer. But then this has ended up being like, kind of like a, kind of like a character in scene kind of image. Like, oh, so if this was our character design, we've showed him kind of like in the world, in how it would look in the world, or how it would look in a mock game engine, or blah, blah, blah. Without being a full body, how he'd look close up. So maybe in a cinematic or something. We don't even have hands in the, in the thing, we just got, Kind of like shapes and stuff. Um, let's try a different texture. I've gone down here and I was talking about watercolor textures. So let's have a look. What's this? A watercolor paper. That's what that is. In the traditional world, watercolor is uh, probably my favorite medium. Just because. Um, it just works well like it's just its own thing like there's mm -hmm. nothing like watercolor in the world you can say gouache but gouache isn't really like watercolor you know gouache is its own thing as well you know and these artistic traditional mediums are really cool um you know if you're a digital artist and you haven't really dabbled in traditional it is a good idea um you know it'll make you a better artist in terms of like overall how seasoned you are at different art, different artistic mediums and also you'll enjoy it it's fun you know it can be fun to kind of step into a different place and do different things you know i remember before i could do digital art i used to do traditional art i remember i had um the heavenly sword game on playstation 3 when it first dropped so this is probably like 2007, right? And I remember there was this guy called Alexandra, Alexandro, Alessandro Taini, and he was a, the concept artist for um, Heavenly Sword, one of the one of the main concept artists. There's another guy called Taimim as well. I think he's a concept artist and a director, right? Um, and they both did some cool work for um, Heavenly Sword, and used I used to flip through the concept art because the game had like pretty much all the concept art just on the game. And I was an artist, I was someone who loved art, so I used to like just put them on the screen and just get inspiration. Um, but even today, the guy Tay Lexi, who worked on that um, game, his work even today still strikes me as absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's nothing like this. This is more rough. He does he does have rough stuff too. He does and he does funny enough. He does use painter sometimes, which is quite funny. But there's not many people use painter. I just want to I just want to kind of keep that being a, a big point. Like painter's not popular, but he he was using it for some of his stuff. But um, the point I'm trying to make is I I used to be inspired and try and do digital 
kind of like level work with traditional mediums out and I, I used to really think oh he's using he's not using digital <laughs> but he was you know and it was fantastic and it was like the work was so good that I, you know in my mind I was thinking I hope one day I can be that good you know and I still in my opinion I've, I've made some pieces that good but for the most part a lot of his stuff's really 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 like top notch um good he probably does use a lot of photo textures and stuff like that and a lot of um things that I, at the time wasn't really thinking about but it doesn't matter to me um fantastic work and i'm still inspired by that today and it's it's a good thing when you can be inspired by work as a kid and then grow up and be inspired by the work you know 2007 was 13 years ago i'm 27 i would have been 14 years old you know and I, i'm still inspired now um when i look at that stuff 100 percent and that's how that's how um i feel like art should make you feel you should be able to get inspired you know all right i got a trick to use Okay, lasso tool, we're gonna to use the polygon lasso tool. Bam. Bam. All I really wanna do is um I wanna take this kind of like the shape here and I just wanna get an airbrush. And I want to just, <clears throat> just want to add some some light to it. In fact, this is a, a tool called the glow brush. This is this is now this this. Every time I watch Ross draws, he's like, "Okay, it's time for color dodge," <laughs> and it's funny because I don't even like color dodge in Photoshop. Like, <clears throat> I don't even use it. I use linear dodge. It's called adding a lot of other softwares, but I use linear dodge because I've always thought color dodge was whack. Um, because it, it like legitimately dodges your stuff. But in Painter, there's this tool called the glow brush. And this thing's fantastic. Like, look at this. It just makes like perfect glows like so easily i don't know who designed this i don't know what the situation was but look at this thing look at the difference in what we just had versus what we have now ridiculous get one of my blenders and just quickly blend that edge all right um but yeah i think you know what guys this is probably where i'm gonna leave off this speed painting um <clears throat> i really enjoyed it just messing around with the paper textures um probably gonna keep messing around with them from now on you know <clears throat> i try and make these videos be educational um but i usually learn a lot myself and it it gives me um a chance to iterate how i really feel about the software how i really feel about you know digital art right now and such and such and you know it just gives me chance to kind of voice some of my feelings on stuff and yada 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 um you know to those of you that watch i appreciate you and you know please like and subscribe helps me get off the ground um keep painting and drawing have fun you know um i think my next video is probably going to be tips to get better or something like that we'll see i'm, I'm going to come up with some tips videos as well you know But I think a lot of them are just going to be me kind of going through the process of like creating different 
types of, of character design, you know, and different kind of how you do different idea processes and how you kind of come up with different types of characters and, you know, male characters versus female characters, maybe, um, maybe male anatomy versus female anatomy, kind of like a, a, a shorthand breakdown or something like that, you know, nothing too crazy, but, or maybe kind of like how you should represent those characters versus each other to kind of get the, the appeal that is kind of popular or, or, an, you know, the, the more, the more storied appeal, because no matter what, everything we see, films, games, everything is all exaggerated for the most part, you know, the character designs are, are usually quite stylized even in stuff that's quite realistic, except for things like The Last of Us. But there seems to be some kind of social um, agenda with that game, to be fair. Um, even though I love the game, you know, there seems to be some kind of social agenda to kind of push um, LGBT themes, which doesn't matter. There's no issue. It just seems like that's what it is. But at the same time, I'm kind of with it. I'm for it. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm for um, the LGBT character existing in the game. <laughs> I don't know why I went on this rant about The Last of Us or this tangent about The Last of Us, but I'm just a lot of games are if they are if there is a female character, they want to push that 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 feminine kind of trait. So they want the character to be beautiful. They want to. I think recent years we've kind of they've started to kind of like cover female characters up a little bit more out of respect and stuff. Um, I don't really care either way, you know, just because Wonder Woman doesn't really wear that many clothes doesn't mean she's not a great warrior, you know, so it doesn't really matter to me. I think classic designs are still classic designs without kind of being overzealous and making them into these kind of like statements. Oh, well, she can wear armor and blah, blah, blah. And because, you know, recently Mortal Kombat kind of strip back on a lot of its sexuality um, within its female characters and they took a lot of heat for that um, but there are, there are agendas and there are people and there is kind of the, the internet and there is people's opinions and yada 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 and you know people have to conform sometimes so I get that but yeah alright they look at look how good this texture is for making a specular highlight that is fantastic but anyway, guys, that is where I'm going to leave this um, speed painting, you know. Maybe I'll show some scale here. Maybe maybe this is a giant robot, so maybe we'll have... Just like in front of him, kind of floating. A couple of couple of like human characters just floating this texture is good because it really feels like um, doing something with traditional paint so strange showed some scale so they're humans and this is a giant machine so yeah you can see the scale this thing's pretty big um, but yeah that was an enjoyable process for me um, you know, I really enjoyed that. It was uh, interesting to kind of see differences. So I, I probably advise a lot of people, artists, to just explore your software a little bit. You know, sometimes try a different tool. Some of the coolest things I've seen people pull off have been, you know, things that have been kind of like different than what they would have tried, you know.
throw in a third guy. I just want to convey that these guys are floating and they're not kind of attached to this guy. My phone's always ringing when, uh, when I make videos. <laughs> I apologize. But yeah, I think that's a wrap, guys. Thank you for watching. And um, I appreciate everything. See you guys in the next one. Peace.